So you want to make pizza dough from scratch. Maybe you got a new pizza stone or a pizza steel, and then you went online and found out you don't know the difference between Neapolitan and New Haven, Poolish or Biga, and then some jag off on Facebook told you your pizza dough is trash if it doesn't take three days to make, right? Have no fear, it doesn't have to be that complicated, I promise. Let's go. What's up, kitchen heads? This is my same day pizza dough. This whole process from start to finish can be done in about five hours, but you can also use this same recipe and put the dough in the fridge for up to 72 hours if you want. You are going to need a pizza stone or a pizza steel, and I highly recommend you getting one of these guys. I actually used a cutting board to launch my pizzas when I first started, so I'll tell you it can be done but I recommend you save yourself the embarrassment. It actually sucked pretty bad. Disclaimer, this is not one of those little nine inch Neapolitan pizzas that's gonna look perfect on your Instagram if you just place one basil leaf perfectly in the middle of it. I don't have a 900 degree oven and frankly, I don't like that kind of pizza. This is gonna be more like the pizza that you grew up eating, just way, way better. This style of dough will actually stand up to some toppings, and in the spirit of that, we're going to make an Italian sausage and onion pizza today. All right, let's get started. So today we're going to make one pie, but there's no fancy baking math if you want to do more than that. Just double this recipe for two pizzas or triple it for three and so on. And we'll start with 100 grams of flour. And I'm using all-purpose flour, but you can use bread flour or even fancy double zero pizza flour if you got it like that. And this will be a third of the flour for the dough. Next, we'll add 200 grams of cold water. And you can chill the water however you want. I like to use a cocktail shaker from back in my glory days because it makes me feel alive again. And why do we want to use cold water? Well, Paul Hollywood says that you always want to use cold water when making any kind of dough. That way you get the slowest rise possible, thus getting the most flavor out of the fermentation process. So we basically want to get the slowest rise we can without having to put this in the fridge. So we'll stir that together and then wait about 10 minutes. This period of time is called the autolyse, and this is where the flour and the water start forming the bonds that are gonna make our gluten structure. After 10 minutes, we'll add three grams of sugar, about three fourths of a gram of yeast, and six grams of malt powder. And this is totally optional if you don't have diastatic malt powder lying around. It just gives it a good color and adds a little bit of depth of flavor. And then you want to stir that together and wait another 10 minutes. And then we'll add seven and a half grams of salt, nine grams of olive oil, and then we'll stir this together. But this time you don't have to wait. Go ahead and add the other 200 grams of flour and start mixing that together. Now at this point, get rid of the whisk. Get in there. Get your hands dirty. This is where you go, oh yeah, it's kind of cold still. And you're not kneading at this point. You really just want to make sure all that flour gets hydrated make sure there's no little dry bits of flour anymore and if there is a few that's fine just put it next to the dough it'll get incorporated in the next step we're gonna dump the dough onto the counter cover it with that same bowl it was in and wait for another 20 minutes now we're gonna take the bowl off and start kneading there are lots of ways to knead dough and pizza is really pretty forgiving so knead it however you like one easy way is to push down one side of the dough fold it in on itself, and then give it like a 45 degree turn, and it basically creates a little tab for you to push down and repeat that process. One thing to remember though, is that pizza dough should always have a top and a bottom. So when you're done kneading it, you flip it over and it should form a little dome shape. And then before you start kneading it again, make sure you flip it back over to where it's upside down, and the bottom is actually the side that you'll be stretching and folding. Once the dough starts to become tight and hard to fold in on itself, it's time to roll it over and give it a break. Let it rest for about 10 minutes and it'll relax quite a bit and become pliable again. I normally do three kneads with two 10 minute breaks in between or something like that. And after each knead, it's good to tighten your dough ball up. And to do that, all you do is scoot it across your work surface, scoot it towards you if possible, 
and just don't let it lift up and that'll create some tension and give you like a nice little taut ball. After the last knead, we're gonna let it sit on the counter maybe about five minutes, just long enough for the bottom to close up around the seams. We wanna trap all that air and gas in the dough. And then we're just gonna oil them up and start the bulk fermentation process. And by the way, if you're gonna make more than one, this is where you would cut your big dough ball into small little pieces and then knead it the same way and form it back into little dough balls. Now we're going to oil up our finished dough ball and place it on the counter. And don't use any more oil than you need right here. It's not going to add anything flavor-wise. Only thing it's going to add is a little bit of a mess when you're trying to stretch out your dough and make your pizza. So we'll set that aside and now let's start our sauce. We'll start with about a half a head of garlic about five or six cloves, and you can use garlic powder if you want, but I always use fresh garlic. We'll get our oil nice and hot, add our garlic, and leave it on medium-low until it's nice and fragrant, starts to get a little bit of color, and then we'll dump in our tomatoes. Now, tomatoes are something where you get what you pay for, and they do vary quite a bit in quality. So if you want the best pizza sauce you've ever had, get some San Marzano tomatoes from Italy and hand-squeeze them into a sauce. But since this video's focus is kind of on simplicity and easiness, I'm just going to use regular old crushed tomatoes. Plus, I'm only doing one pizza, and you can get the crushed tomatoes in a smaller can, and then you don't have to make meatball subs later in the week if you don't want to. While our tomatoes are coming up to a simmer, we'll add the rest of our sauce ingredients. We'll do one tablespoon of salt, about a half tablespoon of sugar, a few dashes of paprika, Okay, big dashes, uh, one teaspoon of black pepper, and one tablespoon of tomato paste. And then we'll add some herbs, and honestly, a little can of dried oregano will work just fine. And of course, ideally, you'd want to do fresh Italian herbs, but that's not always possible. But a nice compromise that I've found that works great is these little containers of partially dried herbs. They taste way better then dried herbs they're not that expensive and they don't go bad in like three days like if you use fresh herbs so i'm going to do like three big pinches of this basically half this little container and this is the point where you would taste the sauce and see if it needs any salt or anything else and also keep in mind you're gonna have to spread this nicely onto a pizza so if it looks a little thick feel free to add some water i'm going to add some right here and full disclosure i added a little bit more off camera and then just let the sauce simmer for a minute. I don't really find it adds anything to leave it simmering for a long time. I think 20 to 30 minutes is fine. Okay, tight. So now let's move on to our toppings. We're going to do some caramelized onions. So we'll start with four tablespoons or a fourth cup of butter, one medium-sized onion. And of course, that's way too much onions for one pizza, but my wife loves caramelized onions, so there's no such thing as too much. And there's no real trick to caramelize onions. You basically just chop them up how you want it, put them in there with the butter for as long as you can stand. I always end up running out of patience and then just turning the heat up higher and kind of finishing them off. But basically, just leave them in there until they look perfect or you give up. And then we'll use that same pan for the sausage. So get the pan nice and hot again. Dump in your big thing of sausage and use a wooden spoon to cut that in half and then cut those halves in half and then cut all those pieces in half. And about the time you're getting sick of cutting the sausage pieces in half, it's gonna be done. And keep in mind, they do need to be done all the way through. We're not doing Chicago deep dish style, so don't give yourself trigonosis or whatever you would get. And that's it for the toppings. We're gonna to keep this one pretty simple. So the only thing we still need before crunch time is to shred some cheese. And I like to do an 80-20 mix of mozzarella to cheddar, but you can just use mozzarella if you like or whatever kind of cheese is going to go good with your toppings. So now we've prepped everything and we've waited at least three hours for the dough to proof. It should be nice and puffy by now. And here you can see we have some gas bubbles from the fermentation process. So let's get down to business. Now that everything's cooked and ready to go, we're going to preheat the oven. And this is where I differ from a lot of people. I've seen that people say, you should put your pizza steel in the oven as hot as it'll go for like an hour to get it as hot as possible. But for me, that ends up burning the bottom of my pizza. So I say uh, maybe if you're using a pizza stone, you need to do that. But the steel makes so much heat that I think you should, if you have a good oven, preheat it to 500 
with the steel in there and then wait like 15 minutes before you start this process. My oven kind of sucks, so I'm putting it as hot as it'll go, which is 525. And then, yeah, I give it 15 or 20 minutes. That way it doesn't get too hot and burn the bottom of the pizza. All right, now it's crunch time. Uh, I've got my setup. Uh, I've got my flour here. I've got a my peel dusted with semolina flour. If you don't have semolina flour, regular flour will work, but it's another one of those things that's highly recommended. Uh, it's worth it. All right, let's get started. Now, admittedly, I am not the best pizza stretcher in the world, but I definitely get the job done, which is great because that means that you can also not be the best at it and still make badass pizza. All right, so now what we do is we push it all the way to the edge, but not completely. Just leave a little bit of air in that crust, and the crust doesn't have to be as big as you might think because it's gonna puff up in the oven. That's the whole point. Now, when I'm stretching it, I try and just let gravity do the work. Uh, if you made your dough properly, it should have some good weight to it, and you shouldn't have to do a ton to get it to just droop down and kind of stretch itself. So I hold on to the crust and then let the rest stretch. And I've heard people say throwing it is only for movies and stuff, and that doesn't really help stretch, but A, it's awesome, and B, I find it works pretty well. So we'll just get it a nice round shape. Ooh. And then we'll throw it on our peel and get this baby in the oven. So we'll start with our sauce. And I don't ever use a ladle to spread my sauce. I don't know why I did that. I think I saw it at like a Joe's Pizza and Pasta and thought it would look cool on this video. And then I was immediately like, what am I doing? And I got the thing I always use. And you always want to do your sauce all the way to the crust, but I'm going especially heavy by the crust because I can see all those air bubbles in the crust. And I'm realizing I probably overproofed this a little while I was setting up all these stupid camera shots. And then I'm going to hit it up with some cheese and again, go all the way to the crust with it. And this is a really hard lesson to learn when you're topping a pizza. Pizza is one of those things where less is actually more. And the cheese is maybe the best part. So you want to put a whole lot of it, but every part of the pizza is the best part. And if you put way too much toppings, it's not going to be balanced and it's not going to melt properly. So leave it to where you can see quite a bit of the sauce. And you can see I still struggle with this, but I'm doing my best. One thing that I always like to do is make sure I give it a little shimmy while I'm doing the toppings to make sure it's still sliding around on that semolina flour. And you can see I forgot to do it here, so I did it in the middle of adding the sausage. And now I'll finish the toppings off. And I told you guys less is more, and then I put a whole lot on there, but I promised you guys a hearty pizza. So I'm going to give it one last shimmy, and then it's time to launch it. So put the peel over the steel, give it the old gamble shake until the edge of the pizza catches the edge of that pizza steel, and then just shimmy that peel out from underneath it. Seriously, you got this. The whole bake should take about six to eight minutes at 500 degrees. I launch it in there, shut the oven door, and then I set a timer for four minutes, or I just look at it and wait till the crust is almost exactly how I want it to look. And then I put it on broil for about two minutes to finish off the crust and to get that cheese all nice and melty and exactly how you want it. And then my oven has like a weird cold spot. So after that, I have to open it, turn the pizza about 180 degrees and bake it for another minute or two. But it's all worth it because when it comes out, it's this thick boy right here. It's got some serious weight to it, but it's still super foldable, like a New York style, nice and crispy on the bottom. And most importantly, since I'm from Texas and I'm a huge piece of shit, the crust goes perfectly dipped in some ranch dressing and savor just as much as the saucy meaty parts. This is going to be your dog's least favorite pizza ever because for once you are not going to share the crust with them. And of course, I'm a traditionalist, so we're going to put crushed red pepper and Parmesan cheese all over it. And now, of course, there's only one thing left to do. Let's try it. Mm. 
perfect crispy bottom, really crust. That's about as good as it gets. There you have it, folks. That's my same day pizza recipe for just basic pizza. But if there's any other style of pizza you want to see a video on, uh, just leave it in the comments. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I really hope you guys try this recipe out. And I hope you never order delivery again. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This whole process from start to finish, can we fucking stop thinking while you're talking?